Mistakes were made. Mistakes were made, guys. <laughs> what's, the, what's the one thing I can't control on the road? Frickin' weather, man. Frickin' weather. We are in an excessive heat wave right now. Currently 115 degrees here in Nevada. And I'm driving around a bus with no air conditioning. Melting, no shower. I am so overdue for a shower, guys. It's not even funny right now. Hundred and fifteen. This is the warmest I have e place I have ever been in my entire life, and especially on this channel. And it absolutely was not planned. My only goal was to get somewhere to get this bus down without having to drive it through snowy passes and ice and snow. And instead, we went from a high of sixty-two in Washington to record. How many times have I said record breaking on this channel? Record breaking heat wave, 115 degrees in October in Nevada. It's hotter than that in Phoenix and, uh, and, um, and Vegas right now at 116 and 118 right now as I'm filming this. It's like, let's just wait for the sun to set because I've been watching the, the, the temperature on the bus. I got to keep an eye on things. But yeah, thank you again for joining me on the channel, guys. This is the best place. It's just right on this side of the bus with the shade. Thank you for following me. This is uh, part two of getting my schoolie from Washington State down to Arizona. And I've just been driving like a maniac out here, but this thing runs like a freaking dream, guys. I could not ask for a better reliable mechanical bus. It is just incredible what a good bus this is. I just need a shower and some AC pronto. <laughs> my goodness. Hey, I will be uploading this video with some connecting internet. Check out the video description below for unlimited high speed internet, the one I brought with me. Not at this particular location because there are no cell towers anywhere near me, near the loneliest road here in Nevada. But later tonight, I'll get this edited and uploaded and then delayed because you're not going to see it till. OK, yeah, yeah. Oh, weird. OK. Yeah, I, I need to just wait for the sun to set. It's going to go down to 96 at 8 p.m it'll dip under triple digits. So I'm just gonna wait for that and not do any more driving right now. Uh, in, in the bus, I've finally using the hatches, both uh, ceiling hatches, every window is down. A little messy because it's a lot windier in here. It picked up my couch, flipped it, and dumped everything that was on the couch there. <laughs> so the bus is a mess, but it's all I can do from keep it to keep it under 130 degrees inside this bus right now. <laughs> just incredible but you know i am i'm making memories is that what I'm, I'm making memories guys i will never forget this crazy trip and if there's just one silver lining it's that this bust is just mechanically perfect perfect you know still uh now we've been going up and down some some inclines and, and down using the brakes a lot and i'm watching the temperature so right there, there's the engine temperature, and it's anywhere between 200 and right there about three o'clock level right there. 250 is the high. Down here is the transmission temperature, and that's staying right at or below 200 no matter what. But as I go up hills, this will creep past 200 and get closer to three o'clock there. So about 225. It makes me feel a little uncomfortable, but then as soon as we start going downhill, or as soon as I lay off and, and downshift in, into fourth, um, it, it starts, to, starts to regain. And I'm just taking a lot and a lot of breaks and it's taking me a lot longer. While I'm waiting for the sun to set and cool off. Uh, well, I'm not wearing a shirt. I got to clip the microphone somewhere. Not my chest hair, so I clipped it to my hat. But I was sitting here eating some chips and noticed, I don't know if it's going to pick up on this camera, but. I can see some old decals on this bus. I don't know if you can see it. Right here is the number 32. Can you see 32? Kind of. Very faintly, like, like where the decals came off and the sun and paint's just a little different. 
Now I've re I put Nomadic Fanatic right there, but it got me thinking because I really wanted to know more of the history of this bus. I knew it was a Washington State bus. I knew that. But like I went up through the compartments up top trying to find any receipts or hints as to where this bus is from. And then I got on the side right here and I looked down and I can make it out. Let me see if I can show you. It's really hard to see, but there's an S, a C, H school district right here. Oh, I don't think you can see it on this camera, but it says Valley, V A L L E Y. No, well, I guess it's not showing up. You'd have to be here in person to really see this. And what's the first word? Well, S N O Q U A L M I E. Snoqualmie Valley School District. Not just any Washington bus, but Snoqualmie is where we go skiing in the winter, uh, way east of Seattle and, and Tacoma. This bus serviced a very cold, icy, snowy route. Indeed, especially in the winter. That's why there's no air conditioning on this bus. There are three heaters on the floor in there that I got to remove and disconnect from the coolant. But also what's interesting about this bus some buses have a chain system where you can push a button and it'll automatically put chains on the rear tires. This one never had that, but it has something else. You see this fill right here with a key? Sander fill. So on the rear dually tires underneath, there is your automatic sanders. It will put sand down on the road in front of both tires to help traction and grip on ice and snow. Couple that with, again, something I've never seen on a diesel pusher. A heater block. So they plug this in every night in the winter so that the diesel engine is warm and easy to start. So not only do I now know it's a Washington State bus, but I know what school district it, it last operated in. And I think I'm gonna keep that Route 66 for fun. Also, it's 2024 now, and this was last inspected by the State Patrol in 2023 inspection with a number. So it just went out of service. Just went out of service. I don't know why. It runs amazing. It runs awesome. There's no rust underneath. <laughs> For a snowy bus, there's no rust. It's like an Arizona bus. A lot of mud. Lots of mud. But no rust crazy, right? So anyway, I'm glad I figured that out before I started sanding and painting this bus and erased history that I would never know. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do some night driving. How do I turn the lights on? Oh, the back lights. Middle lights. Front lights. Hey, how you guys doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cooled off a little bit. The Engine temperature went down. I'm gonna keep all the windows open and the skylights open and we're gonna do some night driving even though I didn't want to, didn't plan to. We're gonna have to do some night driving. It's, uh, I'm four hours behind from being behind yesterday, basically. And uh, my phone will not charge. It gave me that excessive heat warning and, and then it started, their condensation got in the lens. I'm trying to take a picture and you can tell there's moisture inside the phone, but it's supposed to be a dry heat, so. I called Diana, she, she said, uh, put your phone in the cooler. So my phone's in the cooler. I'm gonna get on Highway 50 or the loneliest road. I have some bad memories on that one. We'll do some driving and see how things go. See if it cools down in here. Okay, we're going through some twists and turns, but uh, I just want to show the temperature there in the middle. It's already gone back up to 220-ish. So maybe buses just run hot naturally because I was worried about that when it was 115 and I was going uphill. Now it's nighttime and it's still, still up there. So maybe nothing to worry about. And we're climbing again. This is another mountain pass in Nevada. I believe, I can't remember what it's called. Did not want to do this at night. That's scary. And there's a car behind me. Oh my gosh. Straight uphill. Okay, we're off of the Lincoln Highway, the, the loneliest road there. 
back officially going south. The speed limit is 70 miles an hour here on the way to Vegas. We're still four and a half hours outside of Vegas. I don't think I'm gonna try to do it tonight because already I'm going 45 and a 70. I'm looking for deer more than anything. And it is not cooling down in here, guys. It has still gotta be 100 degrees in here. Ah! We'll get there, might as well just keep driving. I'll get back in a bit. I wanna stay focused and keep my eyes peeled. At least there's not a lot of cars, so I get to keep my high beams on all the time. As you can see, I've got really good visibility. Just don't like driving at night already. I'm tired, guys. I was down to half a tank of diesel, so 50 gallons, so I pulled in here to get some diesel. I was gonna get a cup of coffee, but I'm the only one here and they're closed. Uh, it's taking me a lot longer to drive. I guess the same thing happens uh, in an RV because when Google does the little estimates of how long everything's gonna take, th that's for a, a car, a vehicle, going the speed limit. I'm not doing 70. Like I said, 45 or 50 max. So just not getting far enough. I'm here in Tonopah, Nevada, here at Beans and Brews, a 76 station. And I have an idea, guys. Instead of going any farther, how about I back up, park right there, go to sleep right there. It's a nicely lit, but quiet, except for that semi truck right there, <laughs> quiet spot and beans and brews first thing in the morning, there's my coffee fix right there. I bet I can probably get a croissant or a sandwich right there and get back on the road, get through Vegas in the morning before, it, it's gonna be 116 in Vegas tomorrow. Yeah, I'm gonna call it quits. I'm gonna fill up and I'll move over there. Actually, change of plans. I was backing up over there and trying to get comfortable. And then I looked over at the Texaco because there's, well, there's two gas stations right next to each other. So this is the Texaco and the 76 Beans and Brew right there. And I saw these trucks. I didn't know there was a U-Haul truck too. I wonder if someone's actually sleeping in that U-Haul truck right there. But this is the first time I'm actually using the fact that I'm driving what looks like a commercial school bus in a more of a truck parking area, more like a everybody here is CDL, you know? So uh, <laughs> I'm not, I'm a, I'm a motorhome. But um, yeah, a couple engines idling, but it's not bad. And I think, I, I, think this will, I think this is better than being over there kind of by myself, you know, that way. I'm not drawing a bunch of attention. It's a bright yellow school bus after all, right? So. Oh, I just realized that U-Haul truck has a funky camper. Look at that thing. That's a strange looking camper behind that U-Haul. So yeah, he's, he's sleeping in that behind the U-Haul. Okay. Now, let me get the bed set up. And just like that, my bed's made. Um, I think the way this couch bed thing is designed you can see it's still got the armrest stuff on it. I think you're supposed to deflate that when you use it as a bed, but I don't need to. I can just lay diagonal because I'm short and it works just fine. So that is bed mode. We'll put it in couch mode tomorrow when we leave here. And uh, as I've been doing every night when I stop, get in the cooler, have a little nightcap, a little, little beery poo, a little rainier beer, and then we'll get some shut eye. Night guys, I'll chime back in in the morning. Good morning, everyone. I got a coffee from the Texaco here. It worked out okay here. I blended right into my surroundings. Won't be able to do that quite as easily after I paint this bus and convert it, so I'll take it. But when that sun comes up, though, it hits you here in Nevada. It is intense, guys. Super intense. I just want to get the heck out of here. By car, it's nine hours and 45 minutes to Taterland. I don't know what it's going to be in the bus. I don't know how far we're going to get, but my intentions is by this time the sun sets today in this video, we will be back at Taterland with the bus, okay? I'm not going to film a whole lot. I'm just going to drive. Just going to drive. Catch you guys in a little bit. Okay, maybe the real reason why it takes me so much longer on Google Maps is because I stop often. I pretty much stop every hour on the hour for a break, to rest my back, 
and now I'm hungry and geez, look at all these palm trees here in BD, BT, BAT, uh, Nevada. And here at this hotel casino, it says there's a Denny's in here and I think some eggs and bacon sounds really, really good, right? Let's do it. Oh, the game is pretty empty. There's where Denny's is at. They want you to walk all the way through the casino so you spend money though. Didn't work guys, nice try. Just hungry. All right, got me a food order in and another cup of coffee. There we go, I built my own Grand Slam. How does that look guys? I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. I got pancakes coming too. Boy, I was a lot hungrier than I thought I was. We got another to-go coffee. It's weird though because this is a smoking casino and the smoke is in there. I mean, it's like the old days, eating bacon and eggs with the smell of cigarette smoke. <laughs> Not my style, but let's get back on the road. Ah, the sunshine just dipped behind the clouds. That feels nice because we are already at 105 degrees here. Basically just outside of Las Vegas, we got some palm trees, some tall, tall palm trees. And uh, well, I went inside Terribles and got a water to keep hydrated. There comes the sun again. Okay, yeah, 105 degrees currently. So spo supposed to be 114. I have got to try to stay hydrated because I am terrible at drinking water. But uh, I got me a magnet, my first magnet of the bus trip, I guess. And uh, what's cool about the bus is that it's all metal inside. So I will have no problem finding a place to put my magnets that I collect. I don't know how many more I'm gonna get, but. Okay, this is called Herbst Terrible with the gunfighter there. The best bad guy in the West, Las Vegas, Nevada. Thank you, Terribles, for having a magnet. And we got metal everywhere. <laughs> that was easy. All right, back on the road. Holy moly, guys, back to back days. It is 116 degrees, a degree warmer than yesterday, again, the hottest day of my life here in 2024. Crazy. I am parked here in the shade, letting the engine cool off. I finally got the check engine light. Orange came on on the dash. Looked down, my water engine temperature was over 225, so past the 3 p.m. line right there. So I pulled off the very next exit, and as soon as I even came to a stop, I'm laying off the gas, watching it go back up, and it crept back under 225 degrees. Instantly, the check engine light came on before I stopped here. So I'm just parked in the shade, just, it doesn't look, probably look like it. I am dripping wet from head to toe. I've never been this hot in my life. What a crazy adventure. I'm making, making crazy memories, right? Like, I'll never forget this. It was not supposed to be this way. <laughs> but again, no snow and ice for the bus. So there's that. It's going to be over soon. Soon. But just incredible. What a journey. <laughs> Take a little break. Go in, use the bathroom in here. Maybe a half hour. Let the, temp the engine cooling go down and start this again. Oh, I did get an Arizona magnet. It's a roadrunner with little running feet. Arizona, my second magnet of this trip. <sighs> that took so much longer than I expected, guys. We made it. We made it. I got power and lights in the bus. <sighs> so, we're here. Can you guys tell where I'm at? <laughs> Taterland. Taterland, Sholo, Arizona. Got an extension cord running out to the bus, but here's the thing is, uh, I think things have changed again. They're still having a heat wave down south. I need to fly back to my RV and my kitty isn't. Let me figure some things out. I need to talk to Diana. Danny's over there working on his cruiser, his other bike. Um, yeah, let me rethink this and I'll get back to you in the morning. I'm exhausted. I need to go to bed. Okay, it is the next morning. The bus has left Taterland. I know, I keep changing my mind, right? Came out here to Desert Title of Sholo. They have, they've always treated me well. Got some doggies barking over there. That's right, guys. The bus is registered as a motorhome, RV, bus life, with an I was taken, so I had the, the Y, bus life. I am just gleaming with happiness. That was so freaking 
easy. Oh my gosh. All right, well, even though it is hot as heck down south, need to drive this sucker one more time, seven hours to Quartzsite, Arizona. Which might not make sense because if this video comes after when I brought the... Anyway, doesn't matter, this is real life. It's gonna be hot. So I got my spray bottle, water to spritz myself, might take off my shirt, got all the windows open. Let's do some more driving one more time. All right, we're on the road, hitting a little bit of traffic here before Payson. Um, why, I wouldn't think there'd be a lot of people going down to Phoenix right now with the heat wave, but it is what it is. Um, again, the whole, regist the whole reason why it was so easy to do all this, I have to go back to the little bit of extra I paid and the extra expense there at Northwest Bus Sales to make this easy. I mean, I, I walked in there and I have a Washington State title that's already in my name. The bus is already mine. I just needed a title transfer. And I'll tell you, she only asked me one question. She was going through everything and she's like, huh, this part's not filled in. Would this be a class A, B, or C motorhome? And I said, it would closely, most closely resemble a class A because it does not have a cab over. It's also a diesel pusher. She's like, oh yeah, that sounds like a class A. And gave me all the numbers, gave me my registration, and then she said, would you like a custom plate? It's only, tw it's only $22 more for a custom plate. I said, absolutely. She checked a few. The first six I tried, nope, taken. And then bus life with the Y was available. So yeah, right now I'm taking the route, this route through Payson because it kind of goes west before it drops down into the valley. Whereas the other one through the Salt River Canyon, you're instantly gonna be in the hundred and teens, like right away. So this holds off the heat a little bit, but either way, there's no avoiding it. <laughs> and more on court site when we get there for right now. Slow driving through Payson, wow. Beautiful scenery though. Still taking breaks, being easy with the bus. I found bus parking, I found bus parking. <laughs> we may not have the, the Salt River Canyon views on this route, but there are lots of tall pine trees. Those look like rain clouds over there. That's interesting. We may hit some rain before we hit record hot temperatures. Mongolian Rim Visitors Center appears to be closed. Let's look off the edge here, see if there's some cool views. There are. Heck yeah, this is bear country. Absolutely is. What a view. Holy. Yeah, it's dumping right there. See my fingers at? That's all rain coming down over there. All of this is rain over there. We're kind of going over here, so we'll see. It's still nice and sunny. That seat is pretty comfortable. It's just, I don't know. I just, I would never be a good long haul trucker because I like to stop once an hour and stretch. <laughs> you know? All right, let me use the bathroom over there and then we'll finish this up. Hmm. Maybe I should have closed the top hatches. <laughs> it's just a little bit of drizzle, but you can smell it. It's been a while. It's refreshing. It's nice. Thank you for the little bit of rain. There's nothing back there that really can't get wet. My laptop's put away, so yeah, we'll be fine. Be fine. You knew it was going to be an adventure, Eric. You knew it was going to be an adventure. I love it. <laughs> See, life's more interesting when you take chances and risks and you don't know how it's going to turn out. That's the memory part of it, you know? I will never forget this. <laughs> Oh, geez. All right, we're flying now. We've been going downhill for about four miles. Just about an hour away from the valley, Phoenix. And I can already feel the heat. Man, I love this air ride seat. Every bump, it just goes wunk, 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 wunk. Okay, that was a big bump. <laughs> it's a good ride, though. Harm! 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 We're gonna need dual mini splits in this 40 footer. One up front, one in the back. Yeah, no way around it. I want AC. 
y'all like my makeshift sun visor here. Just draping a t-shirt over it because we are driving straight into that hot western sun as it gets ready to set in about an hour. But in the meantime, switch hands here. We are at 105 degrees at 6.30 p.m. Jeez. Temperature holding steady. Steady it. Can you see it with the glare? No. Well, about 200 engine, 200 transmission. So it's a combination of too hot the other day. Well, above 110 is too hot to me. Shouldn't be driving this in, in 110, plus the hills and grades and mountains. But also, speed is very important. So I'm doing 55 in a 75, 20 mile an hour slower than everyone else. You see the semi coming up fast. But I'm in the right lane and I'm in no rush. I'm doing better today at 105 than I was at 116 and 115, that's for sure. We're almost there. A couple friends are already at courtside. It's early as at the time of this filming. It's very, very early and it's way too hot, but there's a couple dieharders there. Let's see when we get there. Look at that sunset, guys. Courtside, next exit. We're there, 101 degrees. I'll take it, I'll take it. What a journey, <laughs> what a journey. <laughs> I'm still so tired. I'm gonna need like three straight days, days of sleep after I get back to Diana up in Washington State. All right, we're about to pull up to La Posa South in Quartzsite for the first time. But then again, I'm realizing that in 30 days from now, I'll actually pull in with Diana and the Bigfoot in the truck, which you guys have, will have seen first on my channel. This, so this is weird, it's a weird effect, but literally this is actually my first turn it into La Posa South for the season. And we're about to see how busy or busy it isn't. I don't see a single rig. Apparently it's too hot for everybody. Here's our turn. It looks like we have the same camping hosts up here. I recognize those two rigs up there. Um, there are literally people here already set up, solar panels and everything. I, I didn't actually expect that, to be honest, so that's a surprise, but not sure if I can buy my permit tonight. Nope, it says closed. I'll have to buy it in the morning. Okay. <laughs> this little short schoolie and an old pickup truck towing behind it. Pretty barren, guys. Pretty barren. Just a couple of RVs kind of scattered out here. <laughs> That's crazy. Let's head to the spot, if I remember where it's at. All right, we're here. It's getting dark, so I want to make a video before the morning comes. But again, this is pre the other video that you will have already seen when Diana and I got here. <laughs> so Randy's here setting up. Hey, Rick's hey. here, brought some rainier beers. Uh, other than that, you can see it's pretty much wide open everywhere right now. Beautiful sunset behind the camera too. And uh, Pat's over there. And I think Ron and Kathy are here too, or getting to be here. So these are the, these are the, the first people here, yeah. the diehards that love the heat. All right, well, I got some things to figure out on the bus and then somebody, Randy or somebody is gonna be giving me a ride to the airport, the Phoenix airport. We'll lock this up, leave it here. And uh, I'll fly back up and see Diana tomorrow. I'm not gonna film anymore though. I'm gonna take some time off, enjoy my shower, maybe find a hotel with a pool and just really relax. Turn on so you can see me. So anyway, the bus is here. The build can start in our very next video. Thanks for watching the channel guys. We'll see you on the next one.